In this video, we're going to learn how United States president is elected, what is the US Congress, what does it comprises of, what is the difference between House of Representatives and Senate, what is Electoral College, how it works, and in the end, I'll try to answer which has more power, the House of Representatives or the Senate. So let's begin. The US presidential election is held every four years. It occurs on the first Tuesday of November. When the Americans go to vote, they don't vote for the president directly. The US president is not chosen directly by the voters. Instead, American citizens have to vote for a group of officials who make up the electoral college. The word college here simply refers to a group of people whose job is to choose the president and the vice president of the United States of America. Once the electors are elected by the citizens, the electoral college meets and decides who to choose for the post of president and vice president. So how does the electoral college work? The US Congress is the bicameral legislature of the federal government of the United States and consists of two chambers, the House of Representatives and the Senate. As we know, the entire United States of America has 50 states. The states have congressional districts, there are a total of 535 members in the Congress, 100 serve in the US Senate and 435 serve in the US House of Representatives. Members of the House of Representatives make up the Electoral College. They serve for two-year terms and are considered for re-election every two years. Each state, regardless of population or size, has two senators. Currently, there are 100 senators representing the 50 states. Each senator is elected at large in the state for a six-year term. The elections to the Senate are conducted every two years so that only about one-third of the Senate is up for re-election during any election. Senators are also chosen by the governor. If a senator resigns or dies, the governor typically appoints the replacement until a special elect can be held, although it varies from state to state. Now each state sends two senators to represent their state in the US Senate. However, in the House of Representatives, a state's representation is based on its population. For example, smaller states like Wyoming, Alaska and North Dakota have the minimum of three representatives, while large states like California have 53 representatives. As I've told you that each state has congressional districts, members of the US House of Representatives are elected from each congressional districts. And each district has an average population of 7 lakh people. Senators, however, represent the entire state. As I've mentioned, there are a total of 535 members in the Congress. 100 serve in the US Senate and 435 serve in the US House of Representatives. That means a presidential candidate needs to gain 270 or more votes to win the presidency. If you look at this map, you will notice that some states are allocated with more electoral college seats. For example, California, Texas, Florida, New York. This is why presidential candidates target only specific swing states, states where the vote could go either way, rather than trying to win over as many voters as possible across the country. Even then, every state they win will get them closer to the 270 electoral college votes they need. The presiding officer of the Senate chamber is the Vice President of the United States, and the presiding officer of the House of Representatives is the Speaker of the House. He or she is second in line after the vice president. Now what is the difference between the House and Senate chambers? How do they differ? In the House of Representatives, the majority party, it could be either Democratic Party or Republican Party, whosoever it is, they will hold significant power to draft the chamber rules and schedule bills that will reach the flow for debate and voting. They also have primary control of the government budget. All appropriation bills, they are laws that authorize payment of money, must originate in the House. The House also has more members than the Senate. That means the individual members are more accessible to their constituents. The House also has the power to initiate impeachment proceedings against government officials, including the Governor and the President. On the other hand, a Senate gets to set the agenda meaning he or she can decide what bills, what issues and what appointments will be dealt at any given time. A single senator can slow legislation from coming to floor for a vote. The Senate has special powers that come under the category of advice and consent. This means the Senate must approve a number of different activities of the executive branch, including appointment of federal judges, 
cabinet members and ratification of treaties with other nations. The constitution also gives the Senate the power to approve presidential nominations. Although the impeachment proceedings begin in the House, the matter is then sent to the Senate, whose chambers act as a courtroom for the trial. The Senate has the sole power to conduct impeachment trials, essentially serving as the jury, as it did when it acquitted President Bill Clinton in 1999. At least two-thirds of the senators have to find the president guilty to remove him from office. If the US government has to pass a law, it must pass in both chambers. Both the two houses simply have different roles to perform as part of the Congress. They can also act as a check on each other, which is also referred to as the checks and balances of the government. But personally, in my opinion, when I analyze the present scenario of the American politics, as we know, party preferences have become a vital component of the government's decision-making process. I feel the Senate really has more power, not on things that are happening at the moment so much, but over the future of the country. They can set the agenda for the future of the country, the agenda which will take generations to change. So for example, if there is a Democratic or Republican majority in the Senate, the presidential impeachment will totally depend on the Senate and its respective party majority. And as I said, the Senate has the power to approve activities of the executive branch, including appointment of federal judges, cabinet members, and ratification of treaties with other nations, and also the power to approve presidential nominations. There is a famous saying by William Tweed, who was a member of the US House of Representatives, and he also went on to become a senator during the mid-19th century. There is a famous quote by him. It says, I don't care who does the electing so long as I get to do the nominating. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching it.